I have Karan joining me on this episode to talk about stable swaps and uh, a bit of an update around wing riders as well and uh, some of these stable coins that are being listed on the decks as well. We've had quite a few stable coins now entering the Kadana ecosystem and I know there's going to be a lot more. So Karan, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for having me back. We've seen the launch of the Jed stablecoin. We've had also Indigo launch with IUSD. So there's a lot more of these stablecoins launching now. So what what um, kind of impact are these stablecoins going to have and why they're imp- so important for the DeFi ecosystem in general? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, as a general rule, obviously, uh, an ecosystem without stablecoins is very much in free fall because um, if you think about it, um, the, we've got so much sort of positive asset correlation at the moment, and we're inherently in, um, if you like, a very volatile market. So when we get these price movements or even long term, um, what, what's the safety net? What do you go into? Do you go into from ADA to another coin? Well, they're both correlated. So in, in a way, stable coins are a, a safety haven whereby you can, if you like, on-chain, off-ramp um, when, for instance, you want to lock in some of your gains in trading or minimize your losses. So they're a great way to kind of, if you like, you know, um, stabilize your portfolio by moving in and out of them when market volatility increases. Is really, is there any risk to actually using these stable coins? That's a very good question. One hundred percent. I think you know each and every one of them, as I just kind of mentioned, they are independent projects, and also they have different types of mechanisms. Um, for instance, if you talk about general stable coins. Currently, we've got two that we mentioned. We've got an algorithmic and we've got, um, obviously, a synthetic. But then, for instance, um, you've got collateralized ones, such as uh, fiat collateralized ones or commodity collateralized ones. They all have inherent risks, but in different ways. So, for instance, if um, the peg goes in any way, um, obviously, that that stable coin is is in trouble. With, um, um, if you like... um, sort of the collateralized ones, even fiat ones, some people think, well, no, they're completely safe. But if you've got no way of auditing, if you like, the collateral that's behind that stable coin, literally US dollars, and if it's not audited and kind of, you know, approved in a a very verifiable way, and that reserve isn't there and something goes wrong or there's some kind of a rug pull or something, obviously even that's in trouble. So I think it's very important to still be aware, even though it's great news that there's lots of obviously stable coins coming into the market, there are still inherent risks. And you must definitely do your own research to see what's backing them, what's the mechanism that's making that sort of peg actually happen and you know what's is there what could there be a vulnerability and you know even at the base level i think everyone should really look more closely at the assets that they're in now the good part is that Mm. um with more and more coming into cardano different types of them um you can diversify that's one way you know not financial advice but you can have multiple Uh, types of if you like you know stable coins and so let's say you know, for whatever reason, one sort of gets eradicated or depegs or is lost in some way, you still have others that you hold and they maintain their value. I was just about to ask that. Like, uh, would uh, it, it, because we've got USDA coming as well, that one's with uh, uh, from Emergo and is a fully regulated stable coin. Um, so, so that one's pegged directly one to one to the US dollar. Now, well, uh, I was just going to ask, we have so many of them now, and would that be an issue as well for users? But uh, like you said, diversifying your uh, risk across all these uh, different uh, types of stable coins is uh, actually kind of appealing. And uh, I do like that approach, especially with uh, what we saw with um, uh, other algorithmic stable coins uh, previously last year, such as Terra Luna. Um, absolutely collapse and you know that's an algorithmic stable coin and the and the desirability for algorithmic stable coins at the moment uh, the appetite for them is just very low at the moment so i think uh that's that's absolutely. why some people are still skeptical of jed and how that's going to turn out in the long time but now you also have this thing called 
stable swaps. So this this is something I had to look up. I, I I've never heard of this before. I saw you guys tweeting about it um, a little while back, and then suddenly um, it's launched now, isn't it? it uh, can we talk about what stable swaps are? And um, I, I think Wing Riders is the very first Dex to launch a stable swap. Is that correct? Um, first eggs on Cardano, absolutely. Yeah, so we are. Yep. Uh, we're yep. not yep. the uh, um, you know inventors of it. It was actually Marco Egorov, or the founder of Curve Finance, that actually came up with the original paper and came up with it. So, um, I mean, to understand it really in a simple way is to look at you know what types of dexes are there. There's all, obviously order book dexes and there's AMM dexes. AMM dexes work off off of liquidity pools. The liquidity pool has a function that controls obviously the exchange rate um, between there and those um, and obviously the amount of the asset. So the usual one that's used is the constant um, product model, which is very simple, X plus Y, uh, sorry, X, X times Y uh, equals um, K. So um, the amount of, if you like, assets of both assets of X and Y is always constant. So that algorithm obviously works really well for volatile sort of assets, but it doesn't work really well for, um, if you like, um, you know, stable coins or pegged assets. And we shouldn't just say stable coins. I, 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 you notice me not to, um, using um, stable assets. I'm sorry, stable assets, yeah, because it works for yeah. other types of coins, and we we'll come to that. So um, the stable okay. swap invariant, um, if you imagine, is it, the stable swap actual constant pool model is a curve, and um, what what the stable swap invariant does, it actually kind of, if you like, um, sort of little bumps up that part of the curve where the optimum peg range is within those two one-to-one -one ratio assets which have equal value. So therefore, you know, it gives a much more efficient, if you like, um, you know, trading experience and very little volatility. I mean, at the moment, for instance, in the Wing Riders um, pool that we have, which, as you said, is the first one on Cardano, um, you know, you can put a $30,000 swap and the amount of price impact is under 0.1 percent which is amazing and also slippage the other part that's really good with the stable swaps is that the for liquidity providers um it, it, it you know it, again reduces a really important sort of metric which is impermanent loss um, and by doing that, uh, what happens is you, uh, you you get more obviously liquidity coming in, you have increased volumes and more fees for those liquidity providers. So it's a very special one, a little bit more complex, I suppose, than, you know, your standard AMM, but, you know, uh, one that really works well with pegged assets. And um, just the last point I'll make on that is that uh, when I said pegged assets, so for instance, at the moment, we don't have an um, IBTC equivalent, if you like, a counterpart to match it up with the synthetic BTC. And once we get that, and I'm sure Bridges will be bringing that on very soon, like Multichain, one of the biggest, you know, um, they will be bringing on and other Bridges will be bringing these other bridged assets in. You can pair those up as well. So it's not just for stable coins, but for any other sort of paired, similar, well, same value assets of different forms. Gotcha. Okay. That makes total sense. So first off, um, uh, so uh, I, I like that bridge example. So I'll just uh, walk through that. So I've got that really clear in my head. So let's say multi-chain, uh, we've got the integration of multi-chain onto wing riders and I can bring in wrapped BTC. And then we have the synthetic um, from Indigo, the IBTC there. And if I want to, uh, let's say there's um, multiple different trading pairs, but the, 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 the multi-chain BTC isn't paired with what I want to uh, swap for. So I can swap for it for the IBTC version. And because it is a stable swap, the fees are very low. The slippage is very low. The um, uh, price impact, I should say, is very low. So I won't lose price too impact, much yeah. in that swap. Yep, price impact. Yep. I won't lose too much in that swap. And then I can go trade up elsewhere afterwards. So it's... Uh, it allows me to go through those multiple steps with the lowest amount of loss possible. 
Absolutely. I mean, the other thing which is great for Cardano, I think, as a whole is um, talking about like bridged assets. Yeah. So really, it's bringing liquidity, if you like, from other networks into Cardano, converting it into a, an asset that's actually on Cardano, let's say our USD, Jed, or whichever one. And, yeah. you know, so imagine IUSDT comes in from uh, Ethereum and it's, you know, kind of swapped into a card and it increases TVL, right? So it's great bringing liquidity from other chains into Cardano um, using a stable swap. Um, and at the moment, yeah, um, on Wing Riders is the only one pool that we have, which is IUSD and Jed. Now, the other thing that you said was how appealing it is to liquidity providers. So I can... Uh, provide uh, liquidity for the IUSD and JED at the moment. And as users swap in between those, um, I'll be able to collect the fees on it. And uh, like in my head, permanent loss shouldn't be an issue because if I exit on any of those, it will still be worth one USD, right? Absolutely. Unless it depegs, obviously that's the only oh, okay. um, thing that, yeah, <laughs> buy everywhere. Unless one of them depegs, but we'll come to that. There are safeguards on the decks that we've put in place, so... For that right okay yeah I forgot about the de-pegging side of things but this if it doesn't de-peg then the idea is that mm -hmm. i can just leave um my assets there and collect the trading fees as other people are doing swaps and you know they need the different type of assets to use somewhere else in the ecosystem i can just sit um, my assets there and collect the fees along the way um, until you said the de-pegging side of things so what are these safety measures you're talking about Okay. Um, apart from obviously putting it into a liquidity pool, don't forget you can get farming rewards on Wing Riders, which is great as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, that, that's the added advantage of, you know, kind of providing liquidity. But the safeguards are, for instance, imagine for whatever reason, you know, the asset depegs. So that pool that is suffering from that is essentially, you know, any kind of transactions and swapping is uh, automatically stopped on it. So if there's a disaster, so at least you save half of the pool's um, sort of unaffected, if you like, asset. And the other mechanism that actually there's a vote at the moment um, in our governance portal regarding this very matter of sort of, you know, implementing this very much, uh, this safeguard. And um, the other one is obviously if one depegs to 15%, which is like, you know, it's like the US dollar suddenly dropping 15%, which is like a disaster, right? Even depegging of two, three percent can be really disastrous for the US dollar. So the same concept, but if it depegs around 15 percent, um, again, that halting mechanism comes into place and, um, you know, um, no, no transactions go through. So we protect that pool and the assets within it. So those are the kind of safeguards that we're talking about. Gotcha. Okay. That's really cool. And um, I, I will check out that proposal and uh, uh, put links to it so people can see and understand what you guys are trying to implement there. Now, are there any other really cool features? Like uh, while we're talking about this, uh, any other really cool features uh, that have been implemented or being implemented on the decks at the moment? Yeah, um, alongside the stable swap pools, I think um, the zap in um, is a very cool feature. So generally with um, most normal constant product pools, um, which we still have running, by the way, which are fully audited, fully functional for other assets. Um, but um, for the stable swap, we've implemented the zap in. So you don't actually need to have um, the, the right proportion of the pool of two assets to put in. So usually how a liquidity pool works is, let's say just on a simple model, you have 50, 50% 50 of each asset. So you would need to have 50, 50% 50 of each asset when you're putting it in. But with a zapping function, you don't even ha need to have the other asset. So it can be zero amount of the other asset, one asset, you put it in, and essentially you go into the pool with the, um, with, with the one asset that you had. Also, you can manipulate, if you like, the actual proportion of if you're holding the two assets of how much of each asset you want to put in. This is Apple feature, the, um, apart from this very cool thing that it does, is also it saves you money on one batch of fee and one transaction fee. So when you're zapping in, it actually does an automatic swap and a liquidity provision, which obviously saves you on fees. So that's a very cool feature of these um, stable swap pools or pool, I should say, that we have currently. And hopefully we can expand these as more and more assets come online. Cool. 
I hope you do because um, I was uh, doing some DeFi updates on Wing Riders a little bit earlier and I had to buy some more assets uh, on the other <laughs> trading pair. So, you know, it, it would have been convenient if I didn't have to and I could have just uh, zapped directly in from one token. So that would be nice. So, uh Crack the whip, come uh, on, <laughs> get those boys working. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah no. <laughs> they are, honestly, they're working yeah. uh, kind of full steam, honestly. The, the dev team is constantly working on new things. You, you've probably seen it, the community sees it, in actual features that are always coming out. So it's just a matter of, I think, prioritization on various sort of things that should be done before other things should be done. But there's a whole very long list that they have and yeah. they're literally going through it one by one but i think you know some, something a feature like this for instance you know kind of adds to the whole not just wing riders but the whole community you know it's bringing innovation to cardano and that really benefits the whole community and i know there's other projects that are planning to do it which is again great you know it's not it's not a case that you say well no we should be the only ones no if it spurs other projects to also follow suit and uh, for the benefit of of the whole ecosystem and as i said one of the biggest benefits is that you can bring liquidity from other chains and bring it into cardano who does it benefit the whole cardano community so you know i think it's great and you know we should continue and yeah we will try and bring more and more innovation as as time goes by cool brilliant i would love to see um that uh, multi-chain integration and uh, liquidity coming in from that bridge uh, sooner than later, the, the more liquidity, the better that we can play around with. So it'd be great to see that. Absolutely. Um, again, I mean, like, I will say this again, and maybe you, you think I'm becoming very cautious, but, you know, you really be careful. I mean, with bridges, for instance, I mean, multi-chain, 5 billion, I believe, in TVL, 100 million a, a day in, you know, volume, et cetera, 26 chains, you know, it's the biggest chain, right? Um, is there a danger? Well, I'm not saying in particular with multi-chain, but yeah, of course there is. You know, if yeah. for instance the tokens that you lock in on one side for some reason, and as we've seen with multiple chains happen, um, uh, so multiple sorry bridges happen, what happens is that your other sort of bridge token is worthless when uh, the actual collateral that's locked in the bridge is um, you know uh, goes missing or is hacked, and they've often been hacked. So. You know, I think we should be very open about the kind of caveats that we should be thinking about yeah. when we look at yeah. these assets. And again, this is not a financial advice in any way, but really, um, you know, diversify. Don't be like holding just one asset, you know, because that's highly risky. If you hold five different assets, you know, you probably have a lot better chance of um, survival and thriving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, I totally agree with that. Totally agree. And um, yeah, 2022 saw a massive amount of uh, various hacks across different um, bridges. Of course, uh, Wing Riders was one of the first ones to bring in um, uh, assets over Nomad. And uh, unfortunate consequences uh, happened uh, around um, the, the hack on the Ethereum side. And uh, things didn't go well. Absolutely. For many, um, and, you know, Spot on. I mean, you know, that's the thing. And um, users should really be aware, you know, we're not a bridge. We're none of these stable coins assets. We're not the projects behind them. We're obviously kind of, if you like, the protocol platform that you come and you swap and you provide liquidity. So when you are looking at kind of investing in any of these assets, please, please, please. D-Y-O-R, you know, do your own research behind them and make sure you've done as much due diligence as you can before you actually go and buy any of these um, tokens because yeah. it's not, they're not ours. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why we're here. We're trying to provide as much information to the community and uh, make them aware of the various risks that are involved in using the protocol and the platforms in general. And uh, of course, uh, users can make um, their decisions upon that. Now, Absolutely. Grant, is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we uh, close off this interview? I think we've covered most of the things, just the usual ending. You know, please check out our website, <laughs> wingriders.com. Um, check out our socials, which are all there. Join our community on Discord. And obviously stay kind of tuned to all our announcements on Twitter and Telegram. But other than that, no, to thank you for another chance to have a chat about various things. And um, thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Karan. We'll chat again soon.
Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate.